All right, welcome back to Soul Back. This is the R&B podcast. Kyle here back with Tom and Ed. I mean, we were gone for a minute. It's it's so hard to schedule us three together. I remember like back in the day, like 10 years ago before Tom had kids and before I was about to have a kid. And I mean, Ed's always been busy, but it was so much easier to schedule <laughs> one of these things. It was so much easier. But look, everybody's a dad except me. I'm just like, you know, grouch fake dad to millions of people. <laughs> but my, be... my guys are growing up. Do you want to be Puff I mean, Daddy? Uh, oh, that is no. not the daddy I want to be. All right. <laughs> That's yes. But I'll just say shout out to us for at least fitting in. We've done a couple hundred episodes, I feel like, at this yeah. point. Yeah. More, yeah. We might be close, closing in on 150. Yeah. When I'm old someday, I'm going to go back and just listen to all these and have a great time. That's all I know. Get in trouble all over again. Yeah. Relive the drama. <laughs> no, but but here's the thing. Before we talk about 2013, which is the whole purpose of this episode. When we did it, or while we're doing it, it we never did it for the sake of like clicks. It was literally we hit record and we kind of just go on whatever comes to mind. There was really no plan around it. I mean, down eventually it was, okay, how do we reach more than just 10 people? But <laughs> it, it was always just about the, us just talking R&B, which is always the coolest part about it. And, you know, it's been so many podcasts, and I'm not going to say we were the first R&B podcast, but we probably were the dopest. But yes. there was a time now where, like, there are a million of them, and they're all geared on clicks and their sponsors and blah, blah, blah. But back in the day when this first started, I remember when we were tossing around ideas for names. Like, we just wanted to get somewhere, share our love for R&B, have yes. our faces actually visible, and just do what we do in the group chat, except share it with the world. And... I miss those days. Yeah, but it, it, it's very fitting that this week we talk, talk about 2013 because kind, kind of this was the early beginnings of the You Know I Got So, So In Stereo partnership. It was around 2013, if I, if I remember correctly. Yep, it was 2013. Let your boys set the stage. So like it was 2012 or so. I was, you know, I had So In Stereo. I was doing my thing for a while. And I'm not sure who, but one of you bozos decided <laughs> to follow me on Twitter. And mm -hmm. I was already a fan of it. So I was like, oh, cool. So, you know, I'm looking at the content. And, of course, I'm loving what y'all do. I do something similar. And one day on a whim, I remember telling my wife I was going to do it. Sit y'all with the DM and was like, hey, I write album reviews. I see y'all do a little bit, but not something consistently. Would you mind if I did album reviews for your site? And I know Tom, he was, <laughs> Tom, me and Tom was like, that's a great idea, but what's the catch? <laughs> so I was like, there's no catch. Like if I share a little bit of content on my site, you can do the same. And you know, it started out as sort of a, a business thing in 2013. My first review was, um, it was our boy. Yeah, it was, who, who was the first review, Tom? Charlie, Charlie Wilson. It was a Charlie Wilson album. Oh, yes. We'll talk about later today. Um, that was the first review. Everybody loved it. And even though it started out as a business thing, I mean, these are my guys. Tom, I was just in Tom's neighborhood. We went to Biggie's house like last month. We just wow. walked by Biggie. <laughs> had lunch with my wife. So after all this time, 10 years, from a DM becomes my two R&B brothers. Yes. Look at yes. that. Well, let me take you back to 2013. I said, Kyle, I got this DM. Some guy reached out to us. He must some want something guy. from us. That's that's kind of how we how it goes, Ed. When he must be trying to, to us. Yeah. This is the music industry. He must yeah. be trying to get something from us. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. But it worked out beautifully. You know, it's been awesome. We're all good friends now. Yeah. And uh, been talking music for a decade now as we've watched it fall off a cliff together. <laughs> Man, yeah. we have enjoyed their ride. <laughs> all right soon enough we'll talk about the grammy nominations but that'll be another episode i feel oh, like no i feel sense. like we say that every time and then we just like skip through it and we like don't even bother because it just makes us mad but oh um, yeah tom i want to start with you 2013 rmb you kind of went back and you looked at all the albums that came out this this year uh in 2013 when you look back at it now like what are your overall thoughts on on 
kind of kind of just what you looked up and what you saw? When I look at this list we put together of everything that came out this year, my first thought was, wow, this was actually a pretty good year for yeah. R&B. And it almost made me wonder, was this the last year I felt that way about? And I think it might have been. We had so many quality releases. There was a, a large quantity of releases. They weren't yes. all great. Yeah. But there was a lot of good. There was a lot of good ones. So you had like a variety of stuff you would like. There was new artists coming out who are fresh still. And I I was still excited at this time. I mean, how did you feel, Colin Ed? I agree. So this was a time I was going back doing my research, looking up some old album reviews that I did for, you know, I got soul in those old school days. And it was amazing to see like the level of artists that we got consistently. Like if Justin, well, I was going to say if Justin Timberlake <laughs> dropped, the world would blow up. But yes, for a different reason. But we had Justin Timberlake, Beyonce. I mean, there were high level artists. We had yeah. the TGT thing we'll talk about in a minute. There were high level artists just dropping all the time. Whereas today, we're just like begging for Usher. It's like, <laughs> oh, next year. Uh, like we get no star power yeah. and we do get good albums with the lack of star power is there but they are also quality albums i made my list of we'll talk about our top three later on play i made a list of almost 10 albums. i will not do that again in the 2010s i, I think what's cool for me when i look at this list is because we talked about 2012 last episode and to me that edm sound was still very present in 2012 in 2013, that EDM sound starts to die a little bit because I remember that's when like Justin Timberlake came out with Suit and Tie. I think Robin Thicke, Blurred Lines came out around the same time. It, that EDM sound had kind of morphed. It was more of a retro sounding thing now. Yeah. And this was right before Trap came and just destroyed everything. So <laughs> it was kind of that transition period. And we saw a lot of sounds that we were familiar with and we were happy to hear. You know, even with that CR record body party, it's a familiar sample. So I think, and then you had TGT, which came back with like a traditional R&B type of sound. So yeah, like when I look back at this list right here, it still had very much so a lot of core R&B elements, which I love. Um, and EDM had started to die off during this time. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the releases here, um, but we're going to get into everything here um we'll start off with the rookies guys because I, I think that that's a good place to start off um we got a couple here this is actually a really strong list i can't even lie so we have k michelle's rebellious soul mac wilds new york a love story seven streeter call me crazy but so that was her ep her album came out years later but i kind of look at this as her starting point uh kalela cut for me she was huge at that time. She she was buzzing. So right off the bat, that's five artists that each made an impact, five great projects. Like what stands out to you about these projects? I'll start with you, Ed. Which one stands out to you? Ben, I I liked all of them. See, I, I can't even be usual grouchy Ed this year because there's so much good stuff. Oh, actually, I will be later on. Put <laughs> put a pin right there. Um, I'll make y'all mad in a minute. But there was so much. I thought Kay Michelle was going to be, not saying she was like, oh, she's the next Mary J. Blige, but I thought that she would be kind of one of those linchpin artists that would be consistently going through the next decade or so, dropping really solid songs and really solid albums. I thought Rebellious Soul was a great kind of starting point for her. Yeah. And Mac Wiles, he was already coming off of a few years removed from The Wire. People still remember him from that. And like, oh, he's like doing R&B now. And he had this really retro sound. Remember, we're coming off of EDM. Remember the days when you would have a sound, it would last a couple of years, and then it would go away, and there'd be a new sound. <sighs> I wish we could get a, back to that. But anyway, <laughs> so like you had him, and he was this fresh artist. I'm like, man, he's about to do something cool. I love the sound that he's bringing. And then, you know, Kalela, she's kind of been pretty mysterious over the years, but yeah. every time she drops, she's consistent. And this might be one of my favorite projects from her. She came out the gate strong. Everybody was really solid in this effort. I'll just add, uh, well, first off, shout out to our guy, John Michael. He put out his sophisticated yes. album. That's yes, right. my boy. I did want to just mention interesting observation about Katie Michelle. 
Because if you all remember, she was signed, I think, to Sony and then got dropped. She was linked up with R. Kelly, got yeah. dropped. But she, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like she was one of the first who utilized reality TV to kind of propel her career, to, to kind of hit it big. We got to see how, you know, not not in a bad way, but kind of wacky she was. Yeah. And people saw her personality and used social media and blew up off that. And then that became like the thing to do after that. But I felt like in R&B, that was kind of a, Almost a trendsetter in a way. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, we had the the Keisha Cole show and stuff a little bit before, but this is the first time that like we really had a new artist. Someone might correct yeah. me in the comments if I'm messing up, but she feels like the first artist that kind of came new and we saw her journey and fans got invested in her. And that way she jumped from that to stardom. The Cardi B's and all these random rap chicks <laughs> that we see now. Like, K. Michelle kind of paved the way for that. And K. Michelle is actually super talented, and her out debut was really good. So, it was very good. For that. Very good. Pop and Oak. It's oh, a yeah. Killer production on there, too. Um, I mean, I can't go too far without mentioning Seven Streeter's EP, Call Me Crazy. But that was, when we talk about cohesive EPs, like, that's one to me where every song was unique. It had strong songwriting. And... I mean, it's one of those records that when you play now, like the Seven Streeter fans love that record. Twitter loves that whole EP. Um, and then Ariana Grande's project. Now, this is one that kind of surprised most people. And I think it's, I remember when that project came out and how amongst the three of us, more so Tom was debating whether that was R&B, whether it was pop. <laughs> uh, I mean, Babyface was producing it, so it has to be R&B, but um also kind of interesting to see the trajectory of her career starting off R&B pop and now going full blown. And it's kind of made its full circle. She did some EDM. And now she's kind of back into that like trappy pop thing. But to me, that that's a true R&B album and uh, one that a lot of people were surprised at. And it was one of those things where they hit play and they're like, I actually really like this album. So I just remember that for Ariana Grande and I can't forget Tom Maxine Ashley as well. She's still doing her oh, yeah. thing right now, but at that time, was she signed to Pharrell at the time? She was signed to Carrie Crucial Brothers okay. at the time, but okay. worked with uh, Pharrell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So super talented as well. So I think it was a very promising uh, group of artists, and they all put out really solid um, projects. So shout yeah. out to them. Kyle, I totally forgot about Ariana, but that's a great point. I was very skeptical, and I'm not sure who put me on to that album. And I was like, this gives me old school Mariah Carey vibes. Yeah. Not just her, of her vote, but just the whole vibe of the album. Because it was, it was R&B pop, but there were some really good songs on that. And I wish she stayed in that lane, but I think she and her folks knew where R&B was going. So she hit the pop lane and she did her thing. I don't think she's done anything as far as an actual album close yeah. to that debut since. Ed, there's more money to be made in pop. Let's just be honest. Oh, oh you're yeah. not wrong. You're not wrong. But my <laughs> heart wants good music. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about some of these albums that came out. Um, I mean, we have a lot to go through here. There's so much here, Kyle. Where do you even start? <laughs> I don't know. I, I wish someone would have sorted it by gender here because that's what we kind of like to do. <laughs> So I'm gonna have oh, to I'm lot. gonna have to sort it on the spot here. Let's start with the ladies here. We love the ladies. We have <laughs> Beyonce's self-titled album. Let's let's put a pause there because I remember where I was when that album dropped. I remember how crazy the internet was when that thing dropped. That was the surprise album. We had never seen anything like that. Mm. Um, still one of the most innovative releases in music history. Not really something that can be duplicated again and honestly i mean on a side note album release dates aren't even celebrated like they used to be like when this I mean, album came out it was a moment yeah and speaking of release dates you forget i remember when albums came out on tuesdays and now yeah. they're like fridays like this album changed everything it's mm -hmm. easy to, 10 years later you kind of forget but she just randomly one night was like an album is coming out and people were like what <laughs> my memory yeah. was right yeah. after what's that show Ah, uh, Scandal, I think it was. My wife mm. was watching Scandal, and she was on her phone, and she got the notification, and she went crazy. And I'm like, that's not true. That's not how it works. You don't just randomly drop an album. Somebody lied on the Twitter. 
nope, the album came out and it's one of her best albums. It's to me the album that started all of this Beyonce insanity yeah. we see that started with this album. And, and I give her the <laughs> credit because the album was actually good. It is. So, yeah. If I'm being honest, I don't remember where I was when it came out. <laughs> uh, that does not surprise me. <laughs> Probably in bed. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, a couple of other projects I want to talk on. Chrisette Michelle's Better Album. And I'm pausing oh. after each album because these are all just really good albums and they de- deserve the attention that you know they truly deserve. And that Better Album, that to me is Chrisette's best album. By best album, far like her best album. And I hate, and I, y'all heard me preach before, I don't care, you're going to hear it one more time. All of this stuff that has come out in recent years, I, people have kind of backed up off of her now, but yeah. they really threw stones at Chrisette when there are artists out here who have done a thousand times worse that everyone gets a pass on. And for some reason, we have to treat her like the worst artist ever. That's not true. This album proves that whatever went on in the past made one mistake. Forget it. I'm here for the music. This album was incredible. Her shining moment. This unfortunately reminds you of a dark time, though, because this she was still signed to Motown at the time. Yeah, but this is when artists were dropping albums. They weren't getting supported. They were seeing how little numbers they were doing, and kind of turning away from really even bothering to put in quality albums. I'm looking at this list. I see a couple of artists who haven't even dropped an album since, and I wonder if you know that's kind of the cause of it. They put in this quality project. It wasn't supported. They kind of gave up. So that's kind of what I'm reminded of when looking at this era. Yeah, this is a watershed moment when we go through this list and we talked about these big names and like major deals. And like just a couple years later, they aren't putting out anything or they're putting it out on Twitter and you don't know it's out. There's a lot of sadness. As great as these big projects are, <laughs> there's a lot of sadness we're going to be talking about today. Mm-hmm. Fantasia's side effects of you. This was like her first stab at rock soul. That was like the sound that she was going for. I think to me, it's one of her better albums. Production wise, it was very solid. Harmony did a great job on that one. And um I think that that Missy Elliott and Kelly Rowland record was on there too, and that was a big song. It was. If you ask me, it's her best album. I love mm. this album. I remember when I when I interviewed her about this album and Kyle told me ask about her working with Harmony and her team was so impressed. They told me after the interview, we looked at you, we thought you didn't know anything about R&B. Then when, we, <laughs> when you asked that question, we knew you knew your stuff. So good job. Wow. <laughs> hey, Kyle, that's research. I mean, we always research our stuff. Come on. I know we do, but it's so crazy to me. Every time I interview an artist or even someone for my job and they're like, you really did a good job looking up the way you're supposed to. You don't just get artists get, up there and talk about what I get paid Twitter. to do, guys. <laughs> right. Do your jobs, interviewers. Uh, we have Janelle Monet, Electric Lady. This was, a, I actually, you know, I was late to the Janelle Monet train, but I really caught on with this album. This is a really good album. Incredible album from her. Some people say it's her best. I don't think it's her best, but it's one of her best. I know, man, I told you, 20, 2013, we had hits, man. I remember me and Ed having an epic, not argument, but back and forth. I was claiming this wasn't R and B, but he actually swayed my opinion. He, you know, I learned something in that time, and it, this is actually a quality R and B album, and I do like it a lot. So see, Absolutely. Be, be willing to listen, be willing to change your opinion, communicate oh, with man. people. So good things happen. I remember, I remember Tom in 2013. If it doesn't sound like Joe to see Joe or Charlie Wilson, it's not R and B. Oh, oh yeah. my God. That, that sounds best. about right. That sounds about <laughs> I, right. I wish I could still stand by that, but what are you going to do? Nothing yeah. sounds like those anymore. Nope. No. Maybe no R&B existing. <laughs> Tamar Braxton, Love and War. This is actually a really good album. She's um, celebrating, I guess, 10 years. She's on tour right now. Um, and that was a big moment for Tamar. A lot of people think that's her debut. It's not her debut. Yep. She released an album years before that, but this is a really solid album. Sierra. And remind little- us, Kyle. Yes. about tamar how did she get all the hype coming to that album i think it was reality tv wasn't yep, it? it it was, was right it was yeah. it was yet another k michelle situation where we see a yeah. reality tv artist getting catapulted up to another level and that's why people thought it was her debut like no yeah. she had stuff way before that but this was her breakthrough for a lot of fans it, it's kind of crazy when i think back because like this album is 10 years old i remember when the record love and war came out it like 
chart it like crazy on iTunes because of the reality TV show. Yep. People love that record to this day. But you know what? I don't know how to judge a classic R&B song at this point because the genre has changed so much. Like, I feel like Love and War is an amazing song, but can we call that a classic? Is that even possible? Like, I don't know how you determine no. this stuff anymore. I mean, y'all know my rule. I don't. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think that even with the the weight, the scale, if you like, you know, grade on a curve, I still struggle to call that a classic. It's a great song yeah. that everyone remembers. But I don't know about a classic. All right. How and about I, this one? I, then? I, yes. I have to share one of my favorite memories. Her album came out the same day as another artist on this list. Both great albums. I was out at her release event with my guy, Rich Johnson, and I wanted to leave midway through and go to the other listening event. They were happening simultaneously, and he wanted to say at that one, I went to the other one, and we'll get to it later, Raheem Devon, which I love too. That was Raheem, right? You remember that? Good memory, Kyle. Ariana man, Grande was the same day too. What what a time, though. We had Ariana, great albums coming out. Yeah, Ariana, events happening. Ariana Grande was the same time too. Oh, I definitely yeah. wasn't, I wasn't I at her release event. No, I don't think you were invited to that one, Tom. We couldn't even get an interview. You you were trying. Yeah. They were like, Who are you? We're 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 we're, we're pop artists here. Yeah, we're I pop. don't know if it was Leave us know, alone. I got soul or our site, but or I remember writing like this R and B day article and yes. all of those stuff came out that day. I remember yes. that. What a time. What a time. That was fun. Don't get time. that in nine months today. You had to be there. You, you had, had to, to be there. <laughs> then we got two amazing, amazing women here sierra and kelly roland sierra body party now that that is an r&b classic that is y'all know y'all know send your hate tweets to et bowser <laughs> this send is a problem don't, uh we don't care anymore in. we don't care anymore oh yeah i it's guess okay. we don't care anymore <laughs> no. y'all know i don't rock with no sierra no i don't do it with sierra but i like body party a lot what a great song you know future helped write that song right ah don't remind me don't remind hmm. her. I'm sure she don't want to know. All right. And then uh, Kelly Rowland, Talk a Good Game. Again, a really solid album. Again, oh. I think that's her best oh. album. It took me about eight years to really appreciate Motivation as a good song. <laughs> that's that wasn't this album, though. To death. That, that wasn't that was, this album? That was not that album. Damn. I don't. What album was that? That was the one before this one. Was it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't Talk think a it good was game album. was the one with that that dirty laundry song, which I didn't like that song. But oh, wait. I love that song. No, I remember y'all hating when I put it on the. I gotta check the track list here. I'm Tom, confused. just listen to a song called "Red Wine." I think it's called. Is that what it's called, Ed? Red Wine. Yeah. See, and now Tom's got me all confused. I don't know what's on what album. All right, let's. I see. think oh. that's that album. What? Oh. All right, I'll take your word for it. Yes. This is yo. This is the the one with that uh, Neptune's record on it. Feet to the fire. I'm pretty sure I don't even know this album. Then Not really, you the don't. We're moving on. Never go fail. We're Except moving the on. great song with Kevin Cossum on it. Which the, the title track? Oh yes, that is a good song. I remember that of all things. Yeah, yeah. that song was dope. And Down on Love was was really good too. Yep, that was a good album, Tom. It was good. <clears throat> All right, we're moving on ahead. Uh, Janae Eichel, Soul Out. That was a good album. You know, Janae is, she's not necessarily my cup of tea, but I do remember really liking this album. Uh, Dawn from Danny Kane, Golden Heart. Tom, I know you were a big Dawn fan at first. Uh, not to say that you're uh, not anymore, but at that time, her music was really eclectic and kind of unique. Mm -hmm. It was electronic, I'd say. I <laughs> I, I applauded her for kind of breaking out as a solo artist and doing her thing. It kind of got a bit too far from my Joe box, you know. Mm. <laughs> Your Joe, Joe, box? Joe to see Uncle that Charlie. small that small lane I like to stay in. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Um, and then a couple more albums here: Ed uh, Cassie's EP, Rockabye Baby. I know. Oh, no, Cassie. no, no, no. I, I can't <laughs> say anything bad about Cassie right now. Prayers for Cassie. Yes, we love we love you, Cassie. We love you, Cassie. <laughs> uh, and then I'm just gonna skim through a couple more projects here. Feel free to comment. Tanache's Black Water mixtape, Bridget Kelly's cut to Bridget Kelly EP. Actually, that mm -hmm. was a really good EP. That was yeah, yep, that I was like good. that one. I remember that one. Yep. 
That was not the... Which one was this? This is the one with... Um... Was Cocaine really good... Heartbreak? Yeah, it was that one. Yes. And uh, that sad song. Uh, what was that one called, Ed? It's oh, stuck it in my head. It's in my head right now. <sighs> You're not talking about the Frank Ocean song, are you? No, 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 the, no. that's the earlier project. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I'm I'm googling now. Special uh, delivery. Yeah. Special yes. 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 That. Yeah. Yes. Too sad. Love that song. Sad. Great song though. And then they have that song, uh, "Ish Happens." Yep. That's good. That's a good EP. Shoutouts to Bridget. I know she's doing her podcasting now, but. I kind of like her. I like her when she's doing music too. So agreed. Uh, she's another one I miss. All right, let's talk about the fellas here. Got a lot to go Wait, through here. You forgot Amel Larue "Ice Cream Every Day," her oh, last, yeah. her last album. Oh, I don't yeah. have much to say. I just wanted to add it. Where yeah, is just, Amel? I don't know where she is. I just ranked over on SolarStereo dot com. I just ranked her um all her albums maybe about three weeks ago, and I forgot how good that album is. One of her better ones. She, I called her performance at City Winery about a while ago, like seven years, eight years ago, six years. And the I, I filmed one of the songs she was performing. Are you, um, for real? Mm-hmm. The com the, the comments on that were very bad. They I don't still know if she's really? been seen since. They still go, Tom. She hasn't quite been, I don't know. Her voice was just off. I didn't catch it at the time, but man, the, yeah, that people are still commenting. Yeah, so I'm like, that- really? That's a that's a that's a trending YouTube video. <laughs> oh. You know I got Soul Channel. I don't know. All right, let's talk about the fellas here. We can go all day, but let's start with Justin Timberlake's 2020 experience, part one and part two. Let me just say, part one, I would say, is up there with Justified and Future Sex Love Sound. Part two is nowhere close to that. Yeah. Well, see, I'm, and I remember this. I had to. This is again one of the first albums I reviewed for you guys, and I remember I was out of town. This is how dedicated I was to my craft because the album dropped, and I was out of town, and I was in like this Airbnb or whatever. And I, I remember where I was, like working on the album review and in this place. So you can't say your boy don't put in work for his boys. So I did that. I love part one. I think it's a notch, a notch below those first two albums. I don't think it's that good. But I think two is a lot better than people give it credit for. It's uh, completely different. Yeah. It's different, but I think it's better than what people say. I remember when Kyle stayed up all night when Suit and Tie was announced. I think it was releasing at midnight. Oh, yeah. For some reason at the time, that seemed like a long time to wait up for a song to come out. Looking back, it wasn't really. <laughs> no, but, but it, was, it was a different time. It was worth the wait. Yes, I, it was. This album, I almost feel like, has gone underappreciated almost because of where he's gone since, unfortunately. Yeah, it has. We hear about the first two, and then Lord knows the man in the woods nonsense, and then he's the devil today for reasons that I don't want to talk about because I'll rant yeah. for 45 minutes. But <laughs> this album gets stuck in the middle, and people almost forget about it, but it is so good. When people yeah. want the return of Justin... Even if we just got this and we didn't get Justified or Future Sex, we just got this, Justin, people would lose their minds. Mm-hmm. You know what's great. interesting, though? I was thinking, like, he kind of innovated with this album. It didn't sound like anything else at the time. And then he tried to innovate again in his own way with Man of the Woods, and it failed miserably. So we probably will never hear him try to do something like this again, I don't think. No, we won't, thanks to Britney. But, yes, <laughs> I don't think he'll try anything like this again. Hey, you can't hate the guy for trying. <laughs> Plus uh that strawberry bubblegum song. Fantastic record. What a fun yeah. song. I had a video treatment in my head that I've been holding on for 10 years. Somebody <laughs> paid me. Hype Williams holler at me. I got a do video we, treatment for it. Do we get that pristine type of songwriting these days, Ed? Uh what? Pristine? <laughs> Have you heard Sexy Red? No, this is what I deal with. Mm. Drama <laughs> and just random curse words strung together. That's what mm-hmm. songwriting is today. All right, next album. And they just announced that they're getting back together for this tour and this new album, but we can't go any further without talking about the, the Three Kings. Oh, boy. Tyrese, the hype of this album. Genuine and Tank. 
Now, this album, if you ask social media, is a classic. <laughs> At the time, it was hype media. like no tomorrow. I went out and I fell for the Tyrese marketing scheme. He said it was the greatest album since Conf- Confessions. Yep. So I went on <laughs> iTunes. I paid my ten ninety nine, and I bought the album. Album's not bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to trash the album. But is it the greatest thing since Confessions, Ed? It is not a bad album, but it is so okay. For the level of hype that it got, it almost makes me... There are people who just swear by this album, and I swear they're just making themselves love this album more than it is. It's not bad. It's well sung, but there is nothing that gets it to the next level. I mean, we will talk about 20 albums today that are leagues better than this album. It is, in my opinion, one of the most overrated of the decade. Wow. I don't see why y'all. Are. It's not bad. They don't run on Twitter and tag and Tyrese. I said it was terrible. It's not terrible at all, but it does not live up to the hype. It is. If it came out today, it wouldn't be album of the year. It's just so. Eh, eh, hmm. It's an album. It's like well, the Omarion album that dropped earlier this year. It's fine, but they ain't going to be on my album of the year list. No. Here's my observation of, of my recollection of this time. R&B was in a weird space. We were getting, you know, we were coming off the EDM. Artists who were our favorites were chasing trendy sounds. Yep. And I felt like grown folks were so starved for like just singing and something more traditional. Yeah. So everyone just gravitated to this album. Think, And then because they heard it and it wasn't trendy, they just automatically said, I love this. And just stuck with that. Even though looking back, it really wasn't that great i didn't really like the singles i didn't really like the album that much it was just solid that's my opinion yeah 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 perspective is everything and plus perspective always tells you that i'm right so yes but (laughs) i i do think it was a great thing for r&b i'd be curious to see how it goes this time around ego aside i think it's a different time in r&b now i don't think the hunger for traditional r&b is what it used to be because i think most people just forgot what traditional r&b is these days and they just take whatever they can at this point so i'd be yeah. curious to see if they come out again how it does hopefully it does well because them doing well means that the genre is doing well but i it's hard for me to see how this will work <laughs> if they get together and come out with an album i'm not gonna say i'll eat my cell phone but i will be very surprised very I will be the first in line to buy it. Tyrese is going to sell me again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get yeah. ready for your three and a half star album. Coming yes. up soon. Uh, next album is Robin Thicke's Blurred Line. I'll be honest. I don't remember much from this album except. There's a reason. Blurred Lines. <laughs> but I will also say I, I, I like the second single for the rest of my life. That was like a classic. Yeah. Robin Thicke ballad. But aside from that, I don't remember much from this album. Unfortunately. If I remember correctly, I mean, everybody remembers Blurred Lines and all the drama that came across from that, but this, I believe, was the first Robin Thicke album. I was like, I don't know about this Robin, and it would get worse, unfortunately, before it got better, but this album was another kind of disappointment, because Robin always dropped solid albums, and this yeah. one seemed to be a <laughs> single and nothing else. Kyle, yeah. you know I'm shaking my head right now. Yeah. He said this was the first bad album from Robin Thicke. Do you remember when Robin Thicke lost me? Is it the Sex Therapy album? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Oh, <laughs> what was man. wrong with Sex Therapy? That album was fine. Remember, Kyle, I did that interview with um, what was that artist's name that was wearing a Supersonics jersey, and Alex he was even Stone. dissing it. Yeah, he was even like, "Robin, you lost your way." <laughs> oh, it man. was so funny. Shout out to Alan Stone. <laughs> I didn't yeah. hate that album. I did not know there was such hate towards sex. Oh, there. Tom hates that one song, uh, Me I Play. That oh I, I didn't like know. that song that much. Yeah. It shaking it for daddy. Is this even oh, Robin? Yeah. Oh my. That was a banging Good. beat though. I, I will get What are we in. doing? What Actually, are we doing? Tom, I might have to revisit that because <laughs> but, blur, but Blurred Lines, songs. I think let's give Robin his credit because Blurred Lines was one of those records it was a moment in r&b you can't take that away yeah. from him unfortunately yeah. the the backlash of it is is what it is but i still remember when that song came out because before it even blew up i think robin had just posted it on youtube i listened to it i sent it to tom tom was not a fan at first but of course not <laughs> but two months later it was playing everywhere and tom's just like hey i really like this new song by robin Thicke. i'm like 
dude, I just sent it to you two months ago. So yeah, that's it, how it they works. get you. They force yeah. it on you. Yeah, it's an earworm for sure. <laughs> yes, classic. We're talking about the single, right? We are not talking about the album. No, the the single, the single. See, I would almost call it a classic, but the problem is it's just so malign and it has so much baggage from the the line that everybody was saying was like date rape or whatever, and then the the Marvin Gaye stuff. Like it's it's too much baggage to say unbiasedly. But without that, I think it has a strong case. Yeah. I'm gonna say yes because you could put that on anywhere at any time and you'll get people nodding their head to it still. Yeah, I still hear can, a lot. You can do the same thing about like shake that laffy taffy. <laughs> no god. <laughs> I that's guess not can, a song. I guess that's oh. a classic too. No, you will not get head nods over here. Trust that. Well, the wobbles a classic, right? The wobbles yeah, the are wobbles are classic. I mean, nobody <laughs> will deny that. What about the Cupid <laughs> shuffle? That too. That too. Mm. Oh man, I run for the exit when these songs start coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I man. Cupid shuffled when I was up in New York, Tom. Before I saw you, I wow! Was shuffling wow. the Cupid. I, I might have had to change my opinion about getting together. Yeah, <laughs> what? you should have left me at Biggest House. No, I right. saw someone. I heard someone blessing the Macarena from their car the other day. I'm like, what is going on here? No, that's a classic. <laughs> it is. That's it, it, what. Okay. I don't even know what's going on in that song. I don't either. <laughs> All right. Well, can someone tell me what was going on in R. Kelly's album, Black Panther? Oh, player, what? Listen, oh. can I share a story? <laughs> you interviewed him, Tom. I Yes, they invited me to the listening party for this album. I wish you could have seen my expression in the back of the room, sitting there shaking my head while each song came on. I'm like, this is terrible. I oh, knew yeah. it at the time. Because this is coming off the two adult R&B albums. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Remember, like, we had Write Me Back and Love Letter, and everybody's like, oh, he's back, you know, soulfulness. And we get this. People always ask me, like, what's the worst album I've ever reviewed? And this is always the answer. Horrible I wish you could have been there. You should have been there, though, because the way he was trying to explain these songs, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me how you're explaining <laughs> how this is a love song. It makes no sense. Like, what are you talking? But that's when I realized R. Kelly was just like so far in his own ego that no one could tell him anything. And he didn't really accept any feedback. So I was like, wow. Well, yeah, he named the album after Draws. How is it going to be <laughs> romantic? Wait, no, wait, this Tom, album is stupid. Tom, was there food at this listening party? I mean, I don't believe so, actually. Oh, Kel's cheaped out. Well, no, yeah, there was who, no food. You want to no. eat? How do you listen to these songs and eat? Well, I guess people no. eat at the strip clubs. Actually, you, that was the that was the next album. You didn't get invited to the buffet. Oh, log off. No, I did. Just log I off. Did. No, I What's did, it? actually. You there was no the food at that one either. Like, I got, there was no I went food to two. at the buffet? No, no. What? Cows. That's the one where I was taking pictures of them, and then they told me to delete all the pictures. It was bad. I'm like, isn't that what you invited me for? To, you know, take photos so I could do an article? <laughs> like, what am I here for? Delete the photo. So, where you just tell your R. Kelly stories because I am. Just... <laughs> okay, I don't oh know what's God. going on. This right. album yeah. sucked. That's all you need to know. Horrible Jeez. album. All right. Uh, Bilal, I love Surreal. John Legend, Love in the Future. Charlie Wilson, Love Charlie. Now, before I get into my thing about how Charlie Wilson makes the same album every year, it's actually <laughs> really solid. Well, a couple of things before we get there. Before I get to um, Charlie, you mentioned the Bilal. I am. I know a lot of people love Bilal. I know y'all are not big Bilal fans, but I really like this album. This is the first album that he did that I really, really like. But going back to Charlie, I always just have a soft spot because that was my first review for You Know I Got Soul. Yes. And Kyle, you're right. He kind of does make the same album, but the same album is good, so... <laughs> if it ain't broke, why fix it? I think we could play this game called like which char which which song is this Charlie Wilson? Uh which album is this Charlie Wilson song from? And uh you would get every song wrong. Oh, I fail every time. Yeah. Listen, gonna... my dude is about to put out the same exact album he put out twenty years ago, literally, and no one's gonna notice. That's what's nope. about to happen. Yes. I give Shout the out same to the review. Uh, <laughs> so Robin Thick was not the only person that like had a huge Almost unexpected moment. John Legend had the same thing. 
love in the future. This is all of me Ugh. catapulted him to superstardom. And, catapulted him to soccer mom music. And unlike unlike Robin, John has taken full advantage of it and he sits at the top now. He sits at the top of the lounge with the old folks singing boring songs. This man, <laughs> can you go back and listen to the first three hours? We were just talking in the Solo Serial Cypher on Facebook um, about this earlier today. Those first three albums feel like they were like in the distant past. Because once you hear Love in the Future and everything after that, it is Sleepy Time Jones. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, what man. Is <laughs> Sleepy Time down. Jones. Oh, I like it. Shout outs to John. Well, would uh, they say, Ed, don't operate heavy machinery around John Legend's music? Please oh, don't. You will lose limbs in your life. Well, All hold right. on now. Is that song a classic that uh, was on this album, that love song he did for his wife that was so big? What, All of Me? Yeah. That yeah, was on this classic. album. Yeah, now, is that considered a classic? That's a classic. Yes. That's a that's a that's a that's a white person classic. But let's be you can I, be classic I, and not good. This Ed, song is not good. Ed, I came across a Spotify playlist recently. The title was uh, <laughs> uh, the title was uh, songs that make white people turn. <laughs> <laughs> send me send me that. I gotta see this. Was, I need to know what's on this playlist. I think Ice Ice Baby was on there. Oh yeah, it would be. It would There's be. A couple Macarena's probably up there. <laughs> Macarena's on there too. Yes. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I gotta this guess this good. playlist. Yes, I gotta guess what's on this playlist. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was yeah. <laughs> White folks love um rock bass. It takes two. I bet that's up there. Oh yeah, I love that song. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not the, well, I'm not the typical white. I'm not the typical white person, but I'm just saying <laughs> that's a good song. You're not, but still, you just fulfill the prophecy. <laughs> Does that also include Montel Jordan? This is how we do it. I bet. Oh, everyone, oh, everyone yeah. loves that song. Come on. Yeah, that's true. how can you not love that? That's true. All right, um, Tom, Joe, double back evolution of R and B. Where does this rank? Oh man, one of my top three favorite Joe albums. Really? For me, yeah. For me, and that, mm, I have to think about. It, but Ed, for me, this was like Joe. Not that he lost his way, but it was like he was kind of putting out albums. It was solid, but then this one kind of reaffirmed his place among the R&B elite. That's how I felt, Ed. Yeah, every once in a while, because you know Joe in this era was putting out an album like every year. He kind of, yeah. at the end of the year, he chilled out. But he was putting out an album every year, and they would yeah. always be all right. But then he would always drop something. You were like, oh, yeah, I forgot Joe was that dude. Like every third album. And this was that album. I think this is... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I put it in his top three, but it's easily his most underrated album to me. This album mm. was very good. Very yes. good. And then another really good album, Raheem Devon, A Place Called Loveland. Yeah. That was really good. Now, I have, he's on my list, and people are like, oh, when are you going to rank his albums? That dude has a ton of albums. That's what oh, good luck. Good but luck. <laughs> this would be, I'm not saying it's the number one, but if it's not, it's like number two. This is very high on his list. Great. I think it's his best album. And, uh, just such a cohesive project. I was just yes. in love with the production, how it all flowed together so good. Man, I love that one. And then we have The Weekend Kissland. I don't know why this is on here, but Ed? Uh, <laughs> I, I had to do it. I had to do it. I actually like this album. I talked about it on the YouTube page recently, and I defend this album more than my, Even the stands don't like this album because it's so weird, and it just sounds like... Thanos music. Like if Thanos is trying to wow. date some girl, he put this on. But I like it and it's weird. It's at least it's not the 80s cosplay that we get now. I'll yeah. take it over that mess. Other albums that came out, feel free to comment if you want. The Dreams Foreplay, Life Jennings, Life Jennings dropped an album that year, Lucid. Uh, I'm just going down the list. Avant, Face the Music. That was good. Was it? The music. Yes, it had, like, solid. It had a really solid. good song on it. Gratitude is that on this yep. album? Oh, great song! That's a great song. A, yeah, that was a bang. I love that album. And Robert Glasper, Robert Glasper, Black Radio Two. That had that amazing Brandy song on it. Mm -hmm, that's another good one. Might be Kyle, my favorite Black Radio. Kyle, that's that reminds me of when we were looking for um, Glasper at the Grammys, and the, it was like in the cafe, school cafeteria or something. They, oh, they yeah. put the R and B. <laughs> Yep. 
Back there yeah. with they the school w- pizza and the chocolate milk. They they took the R and B away from the main portion of the Grammys and they filmed it in like some I don't oh, even yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what else did we have here? PJ Morton, New Orleans. Mm. Marcus Houston, famous. That was when he was doing his vintage R and B, D'Angelo type of thing. He had mm. that record. Give your love a try. John B. The B sides, which is pretty cool because he just dropped a bunch of music that he didn't get a chance to put out previously and it was on this album so you yeah you i wish we album. got more of that i like wish that. more of us would do that yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely because there were songs that sounded like they were from 1996 and it's because they were yeah. from 1996 so. <laughs> yes that's <laughs> uh, super cool uh ed pop quiz for you mm-hmm. the artist lee bush dropped an ep <laughs> what's the question i'm gonna get the answer wrong because i do not remember who lee bush is sorry lee <laughs> And that that was the question. Who is Lee Bush? He's a well-known R&B singer. I'm I'm blanking. I don't know how well-known because I'm blanking. Sammy. Sammy Lee Bush. Sammy? His name was Lee Bush for about a hot minute. Why was he Lee Bush? It was the real name. He was going through a a thing, I think. Yeah. Well, I learned something new. Now, Ed... At R. Kelly's event, they didn't give out food. At Lee Bush's listening event that I went to for that project, they actually gave out video games. It was sponsored what? by a, a video game company, believe it or not. Like, they gave out like Rayman Legends or whatever game. I was wow. like, they were handing it out. Lee Bush, I am sorry. I didn't know your name, but I will be sending your team my email the next time some games drop because I need some stuff for the PS5. So That's keep right. your boy in mind. That was cool. Although, the one bad thing that happened was they had an open bar, but it was like, help yourself. And I was standing there making a drink for myself, and someone confused me thinking I was the bartender. <laughs> oh, They're like, man. sir, I'll have a, a vodka and uh, cranberry, please. I'm like, I'd be like, player, you better get your own. <laughs> <laughs> or Good you could have just made it and taken the tip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Courtesy of Lee Bush. Lee Bush putting it down. Yes. R. Kelly uh, can't even have a buffet at his buffet. Leave uh, Kells, leave Kells alone. No, never. All right. Uh, Jaheem, Appreciation Day. Was he that still in a major right. on this album, Tom? Yeah. He yeah, was, I right? He was, was like one last... of the last people standing on a major. That was his last one. Yeah, yeah that, that album was okay. Len Lewis, Moment of Truth. Oh, oh my, my boy finally came back. Kyle's boy too. He just sent Kyle a song. He did. Really? Yes. But it's Good one of those. Dude. You don't where, seem very excited. It's one of those things where Glenn will respond to you and disappear for like four months. <laughs> like here's a song. Bye. Yeah. Uh, Darnell Jones, forever. Darnell. Tom, I don't remember this album. It was I... solid. Actually, it was pretty solid. I rem- like I can I vaguely remember it and I don't remember it being terrible. So it was yeah. at least okay. It was it horrible. Was it was Black Pan as I would have remembered. <laughs> Brian McKnight, more than words. Solid, solid. Like album. every Brian McKnight album. And then we had Bobby Valentino. He dropped two albums that year, Dust Till Dawn and Peach Moon. I think so. I thought Dust Till Dawn was 2012. I don't remember that. Dust Till Dawn. I remember Peach Moon. Dust Till Dawn was 20... Because Dust Till Dawn was the one where, where he's like... Where there's like a huge fire in the back. That was 2012. Yeah. So Peach Moon was oh. 2013. All right. 2013 Peach Moon, that was like his adult R&B project a lot of people still love that ep because it had all the live instrumentation and yeah bobby was it's good he was he wasn't doing that trendy stuff like the beep beep record i know you love that record tom (laughs) i feel like we could ask him though yeah and he would probably say i I quickly realized nobody cared about this adult music so i just gave up on it yeah hey man i like though i liked it awareness is key (laughs) you gotta know when to take your l's so maybe we'll get beep beep part two then soon. No, oh, we man. don't. Between beep beep and Mrs. Officer, I love you, Bobby. You my dude, but never again with those two songs. Does pimping all over the world make that list? 
No, I like that song. All as right, goofy then. as it is. One of three. That's not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we, we, we've kind of gone through most of these albums here. Uh, my apologies if we missed any, but I think that was a good recap on um, what came out that year. Let's let's get into our awards here. Um, I think the first one we can talk about is the Rookie of the Year. Kalela K. Michelle. Ariana Grande, Mac Wilds, Seven Streeter. We we'll put our boy John Michael in there. What is everyone's rookie of the year? I'll start with you, Tom. Try to do a tie. A tie, okay. They're both my boys. I think we actually forgot one of my boys, Adrian Marcel. Oh yes, he had the seven days a week. Yep. So I'm gonna count him. He's tied with my other boy, Mac Wilds. Well, I gotta give props to both of those. Non traditional answer, but I want to show love to these guys. They're still doing it today. All right. Ed? Well, see, I got to have two answers. I would have like my answer from the time and then unbiased reviewer answer because at the time, it would have been Mac Wild easily. I thought he was that dude. K. Michelle's really close, but I really thought that he was going to bring just something different to the game. He just, he had a lot of momentum. It felt like he was. I don't know. You could feel a buzz around him. It didn't really go where we thought, but I just really thought he had a lot of potential. But if I'm being your unbiased reviewer, you can't really go against Ariana. Like she had the star power and clearly she had the staying power. So there you go. I love Ariana, but for me, just because I love seven amazing person, great music. I don't even know if you can really give her the award because it was an EP. But guys, this EP, I'm just going to go through the track list. It's, it's seven songs, so it won't take too long. <laughs> Come on over. It won't stop. Sex on the ceiling. Call me crazy. Bands. Shattered. And next. That's like. That's good. That's, it was a, good. Good. That's a good EP right there. Yes, it was good. And then the I don't best know part, if she ever matched it. The best part was at Essence when we told Seven she needed to put out a music video for Shattered. She looked us dead in the eye and said, I already did. Oh, <laughs> oh! And we're like, oops, it we, we missed it, that one. <laughs> it happens, all right. It does happen, but we love Seven. Shout out to Seven. I'm gonna give you the Rookie of the Year, and we need a new album from you. Um, let's go into our top three albums of 2013. Do you guys need a quick recap of what we're doing here? And what albums we? Uh... I don't know if Tom is ready. I'm good. I love if you want to review it for the the listeners. All right, so I'm gonna give you some some albums that uh, I think we'll talk about, but we might not. And are we including the rookies in this top three? Sure, we do. Right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. So, so we have Beyonce, JT, TGT, Chrisette Michelle, R. Kelly, Oops. Tamar Braxton, Kelly Rowland. Raheem Devon. These are just what I think people will pick, but what you guys will pick, but I don't know. K. Pick Michelle. R. Kelly. I, I don't know. Ariana Grande. Uh, sorry, Cassie. I can't put you on it, but we love you, Cassie. Um, Poor Cassie. Queen of R&B. Vogue Italiano. I remember that. Uh-huh. That was good. Time. I love you, Cassie, but let's not go too far. That's what it was. It was she was on the magazine. All right. <laughs> I remember. Let's yeah, not we, remind. We had a whole podcast about that. That was fun. Yeah. All right. All right, Tom. Number three on your top three R and B albums of two thousand and thirteen. A decade ago. By honorable mention, I'll do one. Is uh Chrisette Michelle's better. Mm. I love that album. My number three is Joe's Double Back. I praised it earlier. Really good album. It's one I still come back and listen to, so I got to give that one credit. Nice. Ed? So are we doing honorable mentions or number three? Give me your honorable mentions. So I feel like if I give my honorable mentions, it's going to give it away. So I did my list, and I have like eight albums here for real. So I'm going to give three honorable mentions so I can have some little bit of mystique for later on. I'll give <laughs> Fantasia's album mm -hmm. which i think is her best raheem's which i think is his best yes and then i'll do joe's double back because it's just dope and i have to mm. shout it out. mystique great picks 
my honorable mentions. Uh, I mean, you got to put Chrisette in there. That's an honorable mention. Absolutely. <sighs> this is where it gets kind of tough for me because Beyonce might be an honorable mention for me right now. Got a couple of albums that I like a little more than Beyonce, but yeah, I'll go with those mm -hmm. two as my honorable mentions. Am I going number three or are we doing this number three? Well, I did my three, so you, you two can do yours. Ed, what's your three? So my three is an album that I would have never thought would have been here any other time in the world, but I got to go with Bilal's A Love Surreal. Mm. It is very eclectic. I know everybody loves his debut, first born, second. I could not get into it. It just was not for me. As a reviewer, I can respect and understand that it's a good album, but it's I ain't gonna listen to it. This I listened to. I thought it was well done. The production is yeah. great. It's the right kind of weird for me. So that's number three. <laughs> All right. Uh, number three for me is Kelly Rowland's Talk a Good Game. I can't believe I might be the only one that would have picked a Kelly Rowland album over a Beyonce album, but I just really like this Kelly album. Mm -hmm. To me, probably her best. But yes, her yeah, best. We're, we're gonna go Kelly Rowland number three. Tom, number two. I'm going to have to go with Justin Timberlake, mm. 2020 Vision, part one. I mean, we all praised that one earlier as well. And I need to really revisit that one, too. I feel like I don't pay enough attention, but looking at the track list and thinking about it, man, that's I enjoy that one. So it's great. Wait, can we can we talk about a song here? Because I feel like I'm I'm missing out. But is that Blue Ocean Mirror? Is that song good? I knew you were going to say that song. <laughs> Blue Ocean Floor. People love it. It's, it's a little no. too... Is it good? I don't, I don't it's understand too, it. No, it's, it's it not. feels like you're on the ocean floor. Not the Sebastian from Little Mermaid fun kind. Like the you're drowning kind. But people like it. It I ain't. Just, I skip it. But it's, not, like it. it's not that I don't think it's a good song. I just don't understand it. But people apparently love it. So They love it. It's kind of weird. All right. By the way, these songs of this album are very long. Push well, a Love Girl, eight minutes. You got to remember, they usually had, he usually tacked on like an outro yeah. and switched the beats up. It worked. So, it worked. Ed, if you, if you played this for a Gen Z kid, how long would they last? <laughs> they probably would like Blue Ocean Floor because they're weird. So. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like the songs being eight minutes long. Oh, please. They last two minutes, if that, and they flip to the next. Eight minutes yeah. for one song? No. Yeah. What is this, a bridge? <laughs> <laughs> what's a bridge? What's that? <laughs> is this another song? All right, Ed, what's your number two? My number two is a song that you players were putting as honorable mentions. I cannot stand it. I will do her better justice because the album is called Better. Chrisette mm. Michelle, mm. her best album. And I remember when I ranked um, the best albums of the decade, of, I guess it was a couple years ago, I was even shocked at how high I had this on the list. It holds up today. It's very, very, very good. The production right. there is still good. Yeah. Yes, excellent. My number two will be Fantasia's Side Effects of You. I just mm. remember really liking this album for what it was. It was just super unique, a lot of different sounds on there. And I think that was like Fantasia's sweet spot. So I got to give it to Fantasia, number two. Number one, Tom. I got to go with my boy, Raheem Devon, A Place mm. Called Loveland. Just love the the way this album flows together. It's got interludes on there. He's got an interlude featuring jazz from Drew Hill randomly where he's just singing in the background. Like, wow. who just does that? So I, I I really like that one. Like you said, I think it's his best album. Ed? All right. No more intrigue. My number one is not JT. It's not Beyonce, and I can say that because my <laughs> wife is not here, so she won't run in here screaming. My number one, should be no surprise if you know me, is Janelle the Electric Lady. Mm. Great, great, great album that kind of married together a different, really different genres and, and eras of R&B into yeah. one album, and it just worked so well. Some people say it's her best. I think the album before is a little bit more inventive, and I like that one a little bit more, but they're both on the same level to me. So that's my best. My number one, Janelle. So my number one will obviously be Justin Timberlake. But just part one, though. I don't know about part. I think if we if we make it the whole collection, that might like put him in honorable mention. But 
<laughs> and we're just talking part one. It's definitely number one for me. And then my other number one. Uh, other I have number to, one. <laughs> oh, I paid for the, I paid for this album in 2013. You would not see me paying for. It. Listen, I'll be honest. I've only paid for two albums in the last ten years. What? Yes. I won't tell you how many I paid. I paid for probably like ten this year. I've paid for two out of my own pocket in the last ten years. Wait, when did Brandy's uh 2011 came out? 2012, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so in the last ten years, I've paid for two albums, and they were by the same artist. Mm. Because his marketing plan was just so genius that I, I <laughs> 1099 Ed paid twice for it. The good Black Rose Lord. album and the TGT album. At least Black Rose was good. Yeah. I'll give you that one. Yeah. But it's your list, even though it's highly flawed. Hope the 1099 did you well. Yeah. But Cut. I have not I have not paid for the last uh, Fast and Furious movie. I haven't bought a ticket to that. So <laughs> good. You're so. you're growing. This is called growth. <laughs> But Kyle, don't forget Justin Timberlake's part two has Cabaret on it. That's an amazing Drake song. That's true. An amazing and... Drake song? What sentence is this? I've never heard it before. Cabaret? No, an amazing Drake song. Those words don't go together. <laughs> Sorry, an amazing Drake verse. Better? Uh, yeah. Even Kyle, that's a street stretch these his, days. His verse is tolerable on this Justin Timberlake song. How about no, that? this this song is all right. I told you, I actually like part two. I have no problems with part two. We wouldn't be on this honorable mention list or anything. Yeah. But I thought it was fine. All right, all right. Okay, well, I think that sums up uh, our thoughts on 2013. Ed, I'm kind of dis- disappointed and shocked you didn't put Ariana Grande in your top three. Let's not go crazy now. I liked it, but I, and it's not better than Bilal or Chrisette. Uh, right. It's fine. All right. Um, so I think that that that's it for 2013. I think this has been fun. Uh, Was this the last much... great year of uh, R&B? Yeah. I don't yes. know how much further I can go, Ed. I was... 2013 was great. I'm telling you, you don't believe me. 2015 was good. We got to get there. After that, I don't know. Let's at least make it to 2015. I'm, I'm scanning 2014. Trust me, it's it's it wasn't very good. 2014, <laughs> I don't even remember. So 2015 oh, was good. Trust me. All right. But it was oh. it was tolerable. It wasn't this good. Well, we'll see if we do that or if we. But what we need to actually do is talk about our uh, songs of the year, our yes. year and countdown that we do every year. So we'll do that next, and uh, we'll have like 20 Victoria Monet songs on there and. You know, <laughs> About well, ten well, music soul child. Songs. The entire music soul child album. Probably. It might it might be a first. <laughs> the way this year well, this year actually hasn't been that bad, actually. No, there's some stuff, but that music and hit boy album was great. There's gonna be some songs on that thing. That's my guy right there, Ed. I love when you talk positively about music. I know what is going on. <laughs> I'm going soft in these ten years. Wait, can I ask you guys a dope. can I ask you guys a question about this music soul child album before we get out of here? Yes. Mm-hmm. Would you believe that the highest streamed song on this album is White Rice Deja Vu? <laughs> no, I believe it because the title is so weird. The Gen X is gonna be like, what is this? Yeah. And so But it is not the best song on the album. No, I no. like the song, but it's nowhere near the best song. Yeah. But it's the weirdest title, so it's gonna get clicks. That's right. where we are. All right, all right. And of all songs from the album, that's what he performed when I saw him live for, for some reason. It was weird. It's a weird song in general. Like, why are you talking yeah. about spooning like white rice? <laughs> white rice is good. Listen, Tom, do you still eat white rice? I prefer brown rice at this point. I'll, I'll eat white rice. Yikes. What's, wrong with, what's wrong with brown rice? Oh. I eat brown rice too, Tom. I'll give you this one. It's you not your are... usual granola stuff. Oh, man. Anyways. Now, Kyle, will you eat yellow rice? Yellow rice? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's white rice. No, no, no. I mean, that's a different thing. Yellow, yellow rice. Yellow rice is different. Yeah. What is yellow rice? Am I? You've never had something? yellow rice? I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's good. It's yellow it's good. rice. It's good. Nah, I have no idea. But <laughs> other thing I will say is, I forget. It's gone. My train of thought. <laughs> You're just thrown by the yellow rice. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this though, everyone, we got to stop eating out so much because stuff is too expensive. We got to save our money and get Mario RPG. Ed, are you in? 
I'm in. I'm in. But I thought you were about to say you had to save your money because you have a whole human coming. But nope, you just got a video game. <laughs> they they kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> I, they will be going hand in hand very soon. When the baby sleeps, that's when you... Uh, oh, yeah. That's when you play. Which in Ooh, the beginning you... is like 18 hours, so you're good. But I was going to ask because my friend, my coworker has a child and he's like, no one sleeps in my house anymore. He has a newborn. <laughs> Baby don't sleep, they don't sleep. How did y'all survive this? Tom, how did you survive it? Because Kyle, I don't know if you're going to Yeah, I'm not going to make it. Actually, my son was a pretty good sleeper, but when he was born in the beginning, he just woke up every three hours. So, Kyle, you're not going to have a good, solid sleep. Listen, I'll have, I'll have my 112 albums with me, my Jagged Edge albums. We'll, we'll be all right. All you got to do is play Love in the Future and the whole house. We'll be yeah. asleep like Jigglypuff is singing. You have oh, nothing man. to worry about. Oh, man. All right. All right. Well, guys, we'll do this again soon. Uh, we'll do the year-end countdown and talk about our favorite songs. And then we'll be back on this journey of nostalgia. And hopefully we find some gems along the way. So I'm out, Ed, Tom. It was good talking once again. And we'll do this again soon. All right, players. All right.